Good day to you. Our subject today is sound. At its simplest, sound can be represented as a sine wave of oscillating pressure, but that's not all there is to sound. Making sine waves electronically and using them to drive speakers is quite easy. This means that we can easily synthesize sound rather than relying on musical instruments to do so. And this allows us to easily explore some of the basic properties of natural sounds that give them their rich quality. We explore this richness with some real musical instruments in another video in our series. Here, we'll explore it with electronically synthesized sounds. You'll be surprised at the results. Let's start with a simple tone of a frequency of 440 hertz, or 440 cycles per second. This is known as a pure tone. On the piano keyboard, 440 hertz corresponds to a note of A above middle C. Here is what a 440 hertz sine wave sounds like, and here is what a 440 hertz pure tone looks like on a device that plots amplitude versus time. Sound's basic features, namely loudness and pitch, come from variation in the properties of the sine wave. Let's take our pure tone of A. We step down the amplitude in steps of 2 decibels, reduce the amplitude, and the sound intensity decreases. Frequency of the sine wave is related to its pitch. Again, let's begin with A above middle C and step our way up through the keyboard, key by key, up to 880 hertz. In musical terminology, this is the next highest note of A, and this span is known as an octave. An octave spans a frequency range of 440 hertz. Each note on the piano corresponds to a half interval, and there are 12 half intervals in an octave. Each half interval corresponds to a change of frequency of 440 hertz divided by 12. This is a change of 36 and 2 thirds hertz for each interval. Natural sounds are more complex than pure tones, of course, but even the most complex sound can be broken down into a series of pure tones. This is made possible by the principle of superposition. Let's graph out two sine waves. One has a frequency of 440 hertz, A above middle C, and this is what it sounds like. The other has a slightly higher frequency, let's say 450 hertz, and here is what that sounds like. If we now add the two sine waves, we see a much more complex waveform characterized by a slow oscillation. This comes from the two waves being coincident at some points so that the values add, while at other points the two waves are out of phase and their sums can cancel to zero. And what would such a wave sound like? Let's find out. Here is the 440 hertz tone again, and here is the 450 hertz tone. Let's now mix them together. The two sounds mix just as the added sine waves predict they should, with a slow oscillation in intensity. This means that the pressures from the two waves add, just as the numbers in the sine waves do. In other words, a complex sound arises from the superposition of multiple pure tones upon one another. This is possible because energy, in this case in the form of sound pressure, is conserved and adds, just as numbers do. This is the principle of superposition. Even though natural sounds are complex, they do have a particular architecture. Let's start with a simple one. You can get a nearly pure tone by rubbing the rim of a wine glass with a wetted finger. If you do it just right, the glass will resonate at a particular frequency and emit a sound that is very similar to a pure tone. Here's the spectrogram of that sound. The glass resonates strongly at a frequency of 1000 Hz. This is called the dominant. There are additional bands at 2000 Hz, 3000 Hz, 4000 Hz, and so on. These are called overtones. In a resonant system, overtones occur at integral multiples of the dominant frequency, 2f, 3f, 4f, and so on. 
The overtones represent multiple modes of vibration that are superimposed on the dominant mode. In this instance, the first overtone is considerably softer than the dominant, by about 45 decibels. Let's now put the principle of superposition to work. We'll keep it simple. We'll synthesize a pure tone of 1000 Hz and another pure tone of 2000 Hz. If we mix the two tones together, this is what we get. But remember that the 2000 Hz overtone should be 45 decibels softer than the dominant. If we adjust the intensities properly and mix them together, this is what we get. Here's the actual sound, and here is just the dominant. And let's listen to all three. The tones are indistinguishable. More to the point, the natural sound is mimicked by just the dominant tone alone. There is so little sound energy in the first overtone that we can dispense with it altogether. The resonating wine glass is very nearly a pure tone. Now let's take a more complex sound. Here is an oboe playing the second A above middle C. And here is a spectrograph of that sound. Note the much stronger overtones compared to the resonating wine glass. Let's explore this. We first synthesize a pure tone of 1320 Hz, the second A above middle C. Then a pure tone of 1760 Hz, the first overtone. Unlike the glass, the oboe's first overtone is about as loud as the dominant. Let's now mix them together. First, here is the oboe, and here is the synthesized dominant alone. The sound quality is much different. Now, let's mix in the first overtone at about the same volume as the dominant. Here's the oboe, and here's the synthesized sound again. Just by adding the first dominant, we get a synthesized sound that is similar in quality to the oboes. In musical parlance, the timbres of the two sounds are similar. So as you can see, sound is complicated, but it's put together by some simple and intelligible rules of structure. First, even though sounds are not simply sine waves of pressure, they nevertheless can be put together as multiple sine waves of pressure. Second, because these multiple pressure oscillations are also energy oscillations, this means that we can build up complex sounds simply by adding up all these simple pressure oscillations together. This is the powerful tool that conservation of energy puts into our hands. Third, complex sounds have a fairly simple architecture of dominant tones layered over with overtones that result from multiple modes of vibration in a resonant structure. These occur at simple integral multiples of the dominant mode of vibration. By modulating the relative intensity of these overtones, this provides an additional layer of structure that gives natural sounds their rich and varied quality. Okay, that's all for now. Until we meet again, this is Scott Turner wishing you a good day. Thank you.